To add 1 over 2 and 2 over 5, we start by finding a common number on the bottom that is divisible by both 2 and 5. In this example, we can simply multiply the 2 by the 5 to get a common number of 10. We must now express each of the original fractions, 1 over 2 and 2 over 5, as fractions with bottom number 10. We do this by multiplying the top number of each fraction by the number of times its original bottom number divides into the common number. 2 divides into 10 5 times, giving us 5 times 1, which is 5. 5 divides into 10 twice, giving us 2 times 2, which is 4. We then add the 5 and 4 together to get 9, and place this over our common number of 10 to get our answer of 9 over 10. Air is made up of different colorless gases. Nitrogen makes up 78% of air, and oxygen makes up 21%. A further 1% is made up of other gases, together with water vapor and sometimes pollutants. Carbon dioxide accounts for 0.03% of these other gases. The area, A, of a circle, in this case a wheel, is equal to pi multiplied by the radius, R, squared. We know that pi approximately equals 3.14, and that the radius, 30 centimeters, squared, is equal to 900. If we multiply these two figures together, we find that the area of the circle is 2,826 square centimeters. This is an example of an acute angle, that is, one of less than 90 degrees. This is a right angle, which is an angle of precisely 90 degrees. This is an obtuse angle, which is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And this is a reflex angle, which is an angle greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. Digestion consists of four main stages. First, the food has to be ingested, which simply means that it is eaten. Next, digestion begins, which is the process of breaking down the large food molecules into smaller ones that the body can use. Then absorption occurs as the products of digestion and water pass into the bloodstream. Finally, the body gets rid of any undigested material. This is egestion. Binary code is a computer language that uses binary numbers. Each of the following six-figure binary numbers can be read by a computer as a set of instructions. We can demonstrate this with light bulbs. A number one means the light is on, and a zero turns it off. The number one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, turns on every other lamp in the row. The number one, zero, 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 one turns on the first and last lamps in the row. North, Central and South America contain every land and water biome known, including oceans surrounding the continents, desert in Arizona, mountains in Canada, deciduous forest in New Hampshire, coniferous forest in Washington state, and tundra in Alaska. The ocean is a saltwater biome that supports a huge range of organisms. The upper layer of the ocean contains billions of tiny organisms called plankton that form the ultimate food source for all the ocean's animals. Green, brown and red seaweeds are found on or near the shore. Common ocean animals include fish, mollusks and jellyfish, as well as larger animals such as sharks and whales. Deserts support organisms that are adapted to a shortage of water. Plants such as cacti store water in their stems and have spines instead of leaves to reduce water loss and prevent animals eating them. Most desert animals emerge at night to avoid the high daytime temperatures. During the day, some animals, such as kangaroo rats, shelter in cool burrows. 
Others, including lizards, shelter in rock crevices. Higher up a mountain, as the air gets cooler, the deciduous trees of the lower slopes are replaced by more hardy, coniferous woodland. Above a certain altitude, trees can no longer grow. In this alpine zone, plants are smaller and more like those found in the tundra. The peaks of the highest mountains are bare rock. Mountain animals are also adapted to the temperatures, and many are also adapted to the difficult terrain. Deciduous forests consist of trees such as oak or beech, with other deciduous trees, shrubs and smaller plants forming the undergrowth. Deciduous forest animals include rodents such as mice and shrews, larger ground dwellers such as deer and raccoons, and predators such as foxes. Up in the trees are squirrels and many species of nesting birds. Coniferous forests consist of fir trees or pine trees, often with very little undergrowth. The trees have needle-like leaves that drop all year round, not altogether in the autumn. Coniferous forest animals include bears, lynxes, foxes, squirrels, beavers, birds and insects. The tundra is cold and dry. Its ground is permanently frozen to a depth of about one meter below the surface. It has dense, low-growing plants, such as lichens and mosses, as well as flowering plants with leathery leaves that prevent them losing too much moisture in the dry air. Tundra animals include caribou, lemmings, and arctic foxes. A liquid changes into a gas when it boils or evaporates. When the surrounding temperature rises to the liquid's boiling point and remains at this level, the liquid molecules gain enough energy to break away in large numbers and form a gas. During evaporation, the temperature is below the boiling point and only a few of the liquid molecules have enough energy to break away. If projecting lobes are added to this simple rotating shaft, then it becomes a camshaft. The lobes can be positioned so that each one operates a lever every time the shaft rotates. The levers, or cam followers, can be connected to any machinery that needs to be operated in time with the rotating shaft. Mitosis is the type of cell division that produces growth. This cell's nucleus has two chromosomes, which normally exist as long strands. As mitosis begins, they double, shorten, and thicken. They then divide and move to opposite ends of the cell. The cell then splits to make two daughter cells that are identical to the original cell. Inside the nucleus of a cell, the two chromosomes double and begin to shorten and thicken. Each chromosome now consists of two strands called chromatids, linked by the centromere. The nuclear membrane starts to disappear. The chromosomes line up across the cell and the cell starts to stretch. The centromeres split and the separated chromatids, now called chromosomes, move to opposite ends of the cell, which narrows in the middle. The cell splits into the two daughter cells and a nuclear membrane reforms around each set of chromosomes. These daughter cells are identical to the original cell. This is a mitochondrion, the powerhouse of a cell. In this diagram, you can see the inner membrane and the matrix of the mitochondrion, where many of the reactions involved in respiration take place. During respiration, glucose and oxygen are used to produce energy. First, glucose molecules are broken down into simpler molecules called pyruvate. This happens in the cytoplasm of the cell. Then pyruvate and oxygen molecules enter the mitochondrion. In a series of reactions, the pyruvate is broken down further and combines with the oxygen molecules, producing energy. This energy is stored in a chemical called ATP until it is needed to fuel processes in other parts of the cell. Carbon dioxide and water are produced as waste products.
As water freezes to form ice, it expands slightly. That is why water sometimes bursts its container as it freezes. The freezing point for pure water is 0 degrees Celsius. Pure water stays in its liquid state when it is at a temperature between its freezing point and its boiling point. When pure water boils to form steam, it needs extra energy in order to change state. The boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. Steam is actually invisible. The cloud that you can see consists of tiny water droplets that form as the steam enters cooler air. When drawing up a bar chart, we need to start with an x-axis that will tell us what we are dealing with. In this case, it is people in the UK aged 15 or over who take part in sport, divided into age groups. We also need to add a y-axis. The y-axis tells us how many people from each age group take part in sport. If we add bars, the chart shows that more people in the 15 to 29 age range take part in sport than any other group of adults in the UK. Copper oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to produce copper sulfate and water. If we look at the equation for this reaction, we can see that it is balanced. First, let's look at the left-hand side of the equation. Copper oxide contains one atom of copper and one atom of oxygen. And sulfuric acid contains two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of sulfur and four atoms of oxygen. Now let's look at the right-hand side of the equation. Copper sulfate contains one atom of copper, one atom of sulfur, and four atoms of oxygen. And water contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So on each side of the equation, there is one copper atom, five oxygen atoms, two hydrogen atoms, and one sulfur atom. And the equation is balanced. Paper chromatography can be used to separate the components in a mixture such as black ink. The ink is placed on a piece of chromatography paper. This is called the stationary phase. One end of the paper is then dipped in water. This acts as a solvent and is called the mobile phase because it carries the ink up the paper. A component of the ink that dissolves readily in water will be carried further before it is absorbed by the paper than one that is less soluble. Because the components are absorbed to differing degrees as they are carried along, they become separated and form distinct layers on the paper. These layers can be analyzed to determine the exact components of the ink. When a liquid such as water is heated, its vapor pressure rises along with its temperature. The water reaches its boiling point when the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure at its surface. The boiling process uses up heat energy as the liquid molecules must gain energy to vaporize, so the temperature of the water does not rise while it is boiling. If a substance that dissolves in water, such as common salt, is added, the boiling stops. Adding the salt lowers the vapor pressure of the liquid, so instead of boiling, the temperature starts to rise again. When the vapor pressure reaches the point where it is again equal to the atmospheric pressure, the liquid starts to boil at a temperature a few degrees above the boiling point of pure water. You can see how secondary colors are created when spotlights of the primary colors overlap and become mixed. When you mix red light with an equal amount of blue light, you create a secondary color called magenta. When you mix blue light with an equal amount of green light, you create a secondary color called cyan. More surprisingly, when you mix red light equally with green light, the secondary color you create is yellow. If you mix all three primary colors in equal amounts, you create pure white light. Hypatia formed geometric curves by cutting slices through a cone. Using this method, she was able to form a circle, an ellipse, a parabola, and a hyperbola. This is an exploded view of the various conic sections. By placing 5 in the hundreds column, 8 in the tens column, and 6 in the ones column, 
we can see how the decimal number 586 is put together. When a white blood cell detects the presence of bacteria, which it does by the chemicals the bacteria release, it moves towards them. Once it is close enough, the white blood cell wraps itself around the bacteria, totally surrounding them. The white blood cell now releases chemicals that digest the bacteria. They will no longer be able to cause any harm. Two different gases are separated within this chamber by a barrier. In this simplified view, the molecules of one gas are shown as red spheres, and the molecules of the other gas are shown as blue spheres. The molecules are in random motion. When the barrier separating the gases is removed, the movement of the gas molecules causes them to mix. Although each molecule moves randomly, there is an overall movement of molecules from areas where they are more concentrated into areas where they are less concentrated. This process is called diffusion. Whiskey is distilled from a fermented mash of grains and water. The mixture is placed inside a copper chamber called the still, which is heated by a furnace. The alcohol part of the mixture reaches its boiling point and evaporates first. The alcohol vapor rises up through the neck of the still and passes into a delivery tube and then into a wooden cooling vat. Inside the vat, the vapor passes through a series of copper coils, condensing into a liquid distillate as it does so. This distillate leaves the vat through a small length of copper piping and is processed further to produce whiskey. In order to divide 2 over 5 by 8 over 9, we start by inverting the second fraction to make 9 over 8 and changing the division sign to a multiplication sign. Having done this, we cancel any common factors. 2 divides into itself once and into 8 four times. We then multiply across the 1 by the 9 and the 5 by the 4 to get our answer of 9 over 20. When a snooker cue applies force to a ball, the ball moves off in a straight line until it hits another ball at an angle. At this point, the white ball starts on a new straight line of motion. Some of the white ball's momentum is transferred to the red ball in the collision. The white ball slows and then is brought to a stop by friction. A circuit is wired in series when the components, the battery, the switch and the lamps, are in a single loop. If there is any break in the circuit, the lamps will go out. A parallel circuit splits into branches. If there is a break in the circuit in one branch, the lamp in that branch will go out. However, the current will continue to flow in the other branch, and the lamp in that branch will stay on. Electric current flows to the coil from carbon brushes, turning it into a temporary magnet. The magnetic field around the permanent magnet works against the magnetic field around the coil, forcing the coil to turn. When the coil has passed the vertical position, the commutator reverses the current in the coil. The side that was being pushed up is now being pushed down. Reversing the current every half turn makes the coil spin continuously. In this electrolytic cell, two electrodes, one made of pure copper, the other of impure copper, are placed in a solution of copper sulfate, which can conduct a current. When the electrodes are connected to a battery, energy is put into the circuit and a current begins to flow. Electrons flow from the battery towards the pure copper cathode, the negative electrode. Here they combine with the positive copper ions in the solution, forming copper atoms. These build up on the cathode to form a coating of copper. At the same time, copper atoms in the impure copper anode, the positive electrode, give up electrons into the circuit, becoming positive copper ions which dissolve in the solution. So overall, copper moves from the anode and builds up on the cathode as a purified metal. The pigeon moves by flapping its wings to make a rowing movement through the air. This movement helps the pigeon gain height and pushes it forward at the same time. On the downstroke, the wings force air down and back, lifting the pigeon and pushing it forwards. On the upstroke, the wing feathers separate, allowing air to pass through them. 
pigeons beat their wings three times per second. We have divided this cake into fifths. This is one fifth. These are two fifths. These are three fifths. These are four fifths. And these are five fifths, or the whole. A liquid changes into a solid during the freezing process. As the surrounding temperature drops, the liquid begins to lose heat energy. At the freezing point, the molecules lose so much energy that they take on a solid form. The freezing point is a specific temperature for each element. When a large cog like this one drives a smaller one, the smaller cog turns with more speed but less force. When this arrangement is reversed and the small cog drives the large cog, the large cog turns with less speed but more force. Genetic engineering enables us to alter the way in which an organism develops by changing its genetic makeup. This is a bacterial cell. Inside the cell is a loop of DNA containing many genes. This gene controls the production of a substance that is poisonous to caterpillars. It is cut from the DNA strand by an enzyme. This is a normal tomato plant that is often attacked by caterpillars because it does not have a gene that enables it to make the caterpillar poison. This is one of its cells. Inside the nucleus of the cell is the plant's DNA. It is cut in two by another enzyme. The gene from the bacterial cell is then inserted into the DNA of the tomato plant and the DNA strand is replaced in the nucleus of the plant cell. A new tomato plant grows from the cell. This genetically engineered plant can make the caterpillar poison so it is protected from insect attack. Graphs have two axes. The x-axis which runs along the bottom and the y-axis which runs up the side. The point where they meet is called the origin or zero point. We can plot coordinates on our graph using the x and y axes. For example, the coordinates x equals 2 and y equals 10 will give us a plotted point like this. We can plot some more points in this way and then join them up to get a line. Light energy from the sun travels through the atmosphere and reaches the Earth's surface where it is absorbed. The light energy is converted to heat energy and some is re-emitted by the Earth into the atmosphere. Some of this heat energy escapes directly into space, but much is absorbed by greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane, so the atmosphere and the Earth warm up. This process is called the greenhouse effect. The ring of this halogen hob radiates heat, which warms up the pan. This radiant heat travels as invisible rays called infrared. These rays heat up the base of the pan. The heat conducts through the metal, making the pan hot all over. However, the outside of the pan's handle stays cool enough to touch, as it is coated in plastic, which is an insulator. Heat conducted through the pan begins to warm the soup inside it. Warm soup expands, so it becomes less dense than cool soup. This makes warm soup flow upwards and cool soup flow downwards, where it receives more heat from the base of the pan. This process, known as convection, helps the soup to warm up evenly. Listen to the sound of the alarm clock as we pump air out of this sealed jar. Sound needs a medium, such as air, to travel from one place to another. The inside of this jar is now a vacuum. It contains no air, so there is no medium to carry the sound of the alarm clock. Now listen to the sound of the alarm clock as we pump air back into the jar. When there is more air in the jar, sound can travel through it more easily so the sound from the alarm clock becomes louder. This is reflection and is the result of a wave bouncing off a boundary. We can see wave refraction as the wave reaches a shallow area and changes speed and direction. 
Diffraction occurs when the wave passes through a small gap and spreads out on the other side. Interference is the result of two identical waves overlapping. Sometimes the peak of one wave will cancel the trough of another. This flask contains a solution of ethanoic acid of a known volume but an unknown concentration, plus a few drops of phenolphthalein, an indicator that is colorless in acids. This burette contains a solution of sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali with a known concentration. The sodium hydroxide solution is run slowly into the flask. The solution is added more and more slowly as the exact point where the alkali neutralizes the acid in the flask gets nearer. At the neutral point, the indicator in the flask changes color suddenly to red. The volume of sodium hydroxide solution that has been added is then read off the burette scale and is used together with the other known factors to calculate the concentration of the acid. We estimate the area A under this curve between X equals A and X equals B by summing the areas of these trapezia. A more accurate estimate of the area can be obtained by increasing the number of trapezia N while reducing delta X, the width of each trapezium. The precise area under the curve is given when we have an infinite number of trapezia, each of almost zero width. Because each trapezium is now very thin, the difference in the heights of its vertical sides is negligible, so we can consider it to be a rectangle. The area A exactly equals the sum of the areas of the N rectangles in the limit that N tends to infinity and delta X tends to zero. In the limiting case, we replace the sigma sign with an integral sign and delta X by DX, noting the interval of X values. At constant temperature, the volume of the container is decreased when the piston is pushed down. According to Boyle's law, this causes the gas particles to become closer together and collide more frequently so increasing the pressure inside the container. At constant pressure, the temperature of the gas increases when the container is heated. This increases the kinetic energy of the gas particles. They move more quickly and occupy more space, pushing up the piston. Charles' law states that this increases the volume of the container while the pressure remains constant. The temperature of the gas is increased by heating its container but the volume of the container is kept constant by fixing the piston. According to the pressure law, the pressure inside the container increases because the gas particles have increased energy but no more room to spread out. To make a cock curve, we need to add smaller versions of this equilateral triangle to itself. We replace the line segment that makes up the middle third of each side by two line segments of the same length at 60 degrees to each other. Treating each of the sides that now make up the figure as we did the original three sides, we repeat the process again and again. The Koch curve is a fractal curve that consists of an infinite number of such repetitions. When we magnify any part of the Koch curve by a factor of three, six, nine, or more, we find the same repeated pattern. Nearly five billion years ago, our solar system began life as a spinning cloud of gas, dust, and ice. This cloud was drawn inwards by the force of its own gravity to form a central mass, the young sun. Rock and ice debris clustered together to make the other planets in our solar system. Eventually, the sun will start to run out of energy. Five billion years from now, the sun will swell to at least 100 times its present size, engulfing the planets nearest to it. The sun's outer layers will then disperse into space as a thin cloud of gas. The remains of the sun will cool and fade until it becomes an invisible cold star. Nearly five billion years ago, our solar system began life as a spinning cloud of gas and dust. After a thousand years, this cloud of gas began to collapse under the force of its own gravity and formed a smaller, denser cloud. Complex nuclear reactions took place inside this cloud, 
generating heat and light energy. 100 million years later, particles of rock closest to the sun began to collide and form tiny planets called planetismals. These planetismals attracted gas and dust, making them grow in size. The solar system was forming. The planets of the solar system as we know them today began to orbit the sun. The rocky inner planets orbited closest to the sun. They were formed by absorbing smaller planetismals. The outer planets were more distant and were made up mostly of gases. Five billion years from now, the sun will begin to run out of hydrogen, its source of energy. When this happens, it will swell to at least 100 times its present size. Its outer layers will engulf the planets Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. A million years later, the sun's hydrogen will be used up altogether. Its outer layers will then disperse into space and disappear. In the very distant future, the remains of the sun will have cooled. The outer planets will still orbit the dying star, but they will become even colder as the sun will no longer give out heat or light. The birth of a new star takes place inside a giant cloud of gas and dust called a nebula. The nebula starts to collapse as gravity draws the gas and dust inwards and hundreds of separate young stars are formed. Each young star, or protostar, begins to glow as it generates nuclear energy. The force of the energy blows away most of the surrounding gas and dust, leaving behind a T. Tauri type star. The star now shines steadily for billions of years in the main sequence period of its life, but eventually the gases that fuel the nuclear reactions start to run out. The star's center becomes hotter and hotter, and the star swells to form a red giant. Once all the fuel is used up, the star shrinks to become a white dwarf, which continues to fade. Some very large stars shrink so quickly that they break up spectacularly in a supernova explosion. A giant cloud of gas and dust called a nebula starts to collapse under the force of its own gravity. As material is drawn inwards, it divides up into hundreds of separate masses. The gases inside these masses get hotter and eventually cause nuclear reactions to take place. Nuclear energy pours out of each mass, now called a protostar, in the form of ultraviolet light. The force of the full-scale nuclear reactions blows away most of the surrounding gas and dust, leaving behind a T. Tauri type star. The star now continues to shine steadily for some 10 billion years in the main sequence period of its life. This is the phase that our sun has been in for 5 billion years. Eventually, the gases that fuel the nuclear reactions start to run out. The star's center becomes hotter and hotter, causing the star to swell, and the surface cools, causing it to glow red. Once all the fuel is used up, the star shrinks until it becomes a white dwarf star, which slowly fades into a black dwarf star. Not all stars become white dwarfs. Some are so massive and shrink so quickly that they explode. These explosions are called supernovae. The core of a supernova may remain and take on the form of an extremely dense neutron star or a black hole. Unmagnetized steel has groups of atoms called domains. These domains point in many different directions and their magnetic effect is cancelled out. If steel is stroked with a magnet, it becomes magnetized. This is because stroking a piece of steel with a magnet moves the domains so that they all point in the same direction. Meiosis is the type of cell division that produces sex cells. This cell's nucleus has four chromosomes. As meiosis begins, they double, shorten, and thicken. Each chromosome lines up with its matching chromosome, 
Then the pairs separate and two cells are formed. In each of the two cells, the chromosomes split at the centromere and move to opposite ends of the cells. These split to produce four cells, each with two chromosomes, half the number of chromosomes in the original cell. At the start of meiosis, the four chromosomes double, shorten and thicken. Each chromosome now consists of two strands called chromatids, which are attached to each other by the centromere. Each chromosome made up of two chromatids moves next to its matching pair. The nuclear membrane starts to disappear. The chromosome pairs, still close to each other, line up across the middle of the cell. The members of each chromosome pair separate and move towards opposite ends of the cell. The cell narrows in the middle and divides. The chromosomes line up across the middle of each of the two cells. The centromeres split and the chromatids, now called chromosomes, move towards opposite ends of the cells. Both cells start to split across the middle. Four new cells have been formed, each with two chromosomes, half the number in the original cell, which had four chromosomes. The mass of the astronaut plus a heavy spacesuit is 194 kilograms. On Earth, the weight of the spacesuited astronaut is 1,903 newtons because the Earth's gravity exerts a force of 9.81 newtons on each kilogram. On the Moon, the astronaut's weight is only one-sixth of what it is on Earth because the Moon's gravity is only one-sixth as strong. The astronaut and spacesuit weigh just 317 newtons. Their mass, however, is still 194 kilograms as it does not vary with gravity. We can write the coordinates of the vertices of the triangle T as the matrix M, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Multiplying M by the matrix L produces the matrix M prime. The elements of M prime give the coordinates of the vertices of a new triangle T prime, 0, 0, minus 2, 0, minus 2, 2. So the matrix L represents a reflection in the y-axis and an enlargement, scale factor 2, about the origin. We can multiply matrix A by matrix B in this order to obtain matrix C. To calculate the element in row 1, column 1 of C, multiply each element in row 1 of A by the corresponding element in column 1 of B and add the products. Similarly, to obtain the element in row 1, column 2 of C, multiply each element in row 1 of A by the corresponding element in column 2 of B and add the products. Repeat this process for the remaining elements of C. So AB equals C is this matrix. When the tube of a Geiger-Muller counter is held close to uranium rock, an intense clicking noise is emitted from the counter's loudspeaker. This indicates that high levels of natural radiation are being given off by the uranium. The luminous paint used to highlight clock and watch dials gives off low levels of radiation. When the Geiger-Muller counter tube is held close to one of the dials, a less intense clicking noise is emitted from the loudspeaker. When a solid changes into a liquid, it is said to melt, and when a gas changes into a liquid, it is said to condense. As the surrounding temperature rises, the atoms in a solid gain more and more energy. At the solid's melting point, the atoms rearrange themselves and take on the more energetic form of a liquid. As the temperature surrounding a gas lowers to the condensing point, the molecules in the gas lose energy and take on the less energetic form of a liquid. The hormone adrenaline binds loosely to a receptor molecule on the cell membrane. This causes an enzyme to be activated in response. This enzyme is used to convert the chemical ATP into molecules of a substance called cyclic AMP. 
Each enzyme molecule is reused, so one molecule of enzyme helps to produce around 100 cyclic AMP molecules. The cyclic AMP is then used to produce molecules of another enzyme called a protein kinase. Up to 100 molecules of protein kinase are produced for every molecule of cyclic AMP. The protein kinase starts a series of further reactions and an enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase is produced. This is used to convert molecules of glycogen into molecules of glucose. Again, each enzyme molecule is reused many times. The resulting glucose is used to obtain energy. The production of glucose as a result of the action of adrenaline is called a cascade reaction. This is because the effect of one hormone molecule is amplified many times to produce up to 10 billion glucose molecules. When multiplying 9 over 12 by 36 over 45, we start by looking for ways to simplify the fractions. In this case, we can cancel the 12 against the 36 and the 9 against the 45. To do this, we divide one figure by the other. 12 divides into itself once and into 36 three times. 9 divides into itself once and into 45 five times. We then multiply the top numbers together to get the upper part of the fraction and multiply the bottom numbers together to get the lower part of the fraction. This gives us 3 over 5. The object of this puzzle is to trace over all the lines without going over any twice. Start and finish at the same point. The Merbius strip is made by giving a half twist to a strip of material and then joining the ends together. This means that the strip has only one edge. Belt driven machines are often fitted with a Merbius strip because the half twist in the belt ensures that both sides of the belt are used. At the start of a nuclear fission reaction, a subatomic particle called a neutron joins the nucleus or center of a uranium-235 atom. The addition of the neutron is just sufficient to destabilize the nucleus into which it has been absorbed. The nucleus then splits into two parts in a process called fission. Two or three neutrons are produced by this splitting, which go on to split more atomic nuclei in a chain reaction. As the chain reaction proceeds, vast amounts of energy are released. In the Sun, where nuclear fusion occurs naturally, two types of hydrogen gas nuclei fuse together to form a helium gas nucleus plus an atomic particle called a neutron. A small amount of mass is lost in the process and is converted into vast amounts of energy. The extremely high temperatures in the Sun cause this process to repeat continuously. By rotating these Hindu Arabic numerals, we can begin to recognize some familiar shapes. This shape becomes a two, and this shape becomes a seven. In this experiment, Hydrogen gas is passed through a special chamber. Inside the chamber, the hydrogen passes over heated black copper oxide. As a result, the black copper oxide loses oxygen and gradually turns pink as it is reduced to copper. One percent of anything is one hundredth of the whole. To find, for example, twenty percent, we divide by 100 to get 1% and then multiply the 1% by 20 to get 20%. This is one of the chloroplasts in a plant cell where photosynthesis takes place. Carbon dioxide and water enter the chloroplast and are converted to glucose and oxygen with the help of chlorophyll and the energy in sunlight. The food made during photosynthesis 
is carried to other parts of the plant for use or storage. Polygons are flat geometric figures. They can be divided into different categories depending on how their sides and their interior angles are arranged. Each of the interior angles of a convex polygon is less than 180 degrees. By contrast, the reentrant polygon has at least one interior angle that is greater than 180 degrees. The triangle is the simplest plane polygon and has three sides. This equilateral triangle has sides of equal length and three equal interior angles of 60 degrees. The square is a four-sided polygon. It has sides of equal length and four equal interior angles of 90 degrees. The pentagon is a five-sided polygon. This regular pentagon has sides of equal length and five equal interior angles of 108 degrees. The octagon is an eight-sided polygon. This regular octagon has sides of equal length and eight equal interior angles of 135 degrees. Re-entrant polygons have at least one interior angle that is greater than 180 degrees. Power is the rate of doing work. The people inside these lifts are being raised vertically. This means that they gain potential or height energy. The lifts are said to do work on the occupants. Both these lifts raise their occupants by the same height and therefore do the same total work. However, one lift reaches the top twice as quickly as the other. It does the same work in half the time, so requires twice the power. Inside this square cube, we can arrange four congruent right angle triangles of sides A, B, C. So the square cube has sides of length A plus B. Two pink squares are left within Q, one of area A squared and the other of area B squared. We can rearrange the four triangles inside the square Q to leave one pink square of area C squared. The area of the pink region remains constant. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Alpha particles, beta particles and gamma rays are three types of radiation given out by radioactive substances. Alpha particles are the least penetrating form of radiation. Each particle is composed of two protons and two neutrons from the nucleus of an atom. Their path can be blocked by a thin piece of paper. Beta particles can penetrate further than alpha particles and are composed of electrons. They can pass through paper but are blocked by a thin sheet of light metal such as aluminium. Gamma rays are the most penetrating type of radiation. They are electromagnetic waves similar to microwaves, radio waves and light. Only a thick sheet of heavy metal, such as lead, can block their path. After being cut open, a pepper shrinks a little as it dries out. After a week, a mold carried on the air starts to feed on the pepper. The mold breaks the flesh down and absorbs the resulting chemical components. Then the pepper shrinks even more. The mold takes longer to break down the stalk, seeds and tough outer skin. A mixture of liquids that do not dissolve in each other is placed in a separating funnel and allowed to stand so that the different liquids form separate layers. Opening a tap in the funnel stem allows the bottom layer, which is the most dense liquid, to run slowly out of the funnel and into a collection vessel placed underneath. As soon as all of this first liquid has been collected, the tap is closed. This process is then repeated for each liquid using a new collection vessel for each one. In an arithmetic sequence, each number in the sequence increases by the same amount. Here, each new number is one bigger than the number before it. In a geometric sequence, each number in the sequence is multiplied by the same amount. Here, each number has a value double that of the number before it. 
Each face of a regular polyhedron is an identical regular polygon. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato noted that there are only five regular polyhedra. These are now called the platonic solids. This is a regular dodecahedron. A tetrahedron has four triangular faces. Each face of this regular tetrahedron is an equilateral triangle, that is, a triangle with three equal sides. A cube has six identical faces, each of which is a square. Octahedra have eight faces. Each face of this regular octahedron is an equilateral triangle just like a regular tetrahedron. A dodecahedron has 12 faces. Each face of this regular dodecahedron is a regular pentagon. An icosahedron has 20 faces. Each face of this regular icosahedron is an equilateral triangle, just like the regular tetrahedron and octahedron. One way of picturing how your solution forms is to imagine the water molecules sitting on top of molecules of glucose. The water molecules then begin to move between the glucose molecules, forcing them apart. When this happens, the separated glucose molecules gradually move away and become dispersed among the rest of the water molecules. When all the glucose molecules have been dispersed, the glucose is said to have dissolved in the water and the mixture becomes a solution. To subtract 1 over 2 from 3 over 5, we start by finding a common number on the bottom that is divisible by both 2 and 5. In this example, we can simply multiply the 2 by the 5 to get a common number of 10. We must now express each of the original fractions as fractions with bottom number 10. 5 divides into 10 twice, and so we multiply the 3 by 2 to get 6. 2 divides into 10 5 times, and so we multiply the 1 by 5 to get 5. We then subtract 5 over 10 from 6 over 10 to get 1 over 10. Imagine a flexible sheet with edges A, B, C and D marked with arrows. The arrows on edges A and C point in opposite directions. Now, we roll up the sheet to join edges B and D, forming a cylinder with circular edges A and C. We need to join the edges A and C together with their arrows pointing the same way, so we cannot bend the cylinder around like this. We could approach edge C from behind, but this curved surface is in the way. We can cross the curved surface with edge A without intersecting it only by pulling edge A into the fourth dimension, here colored violet. On the other side of the curved surface, we can push edge A back into three dimensions and join it to edge C with the arrows pointing the same way. The result is a model of a Klein bottle, a surface that exists in four dimensions. This is the axon of a nerve cell or neuron. When no impulse is being transmitted, its interior is negatively charged. When the neuron is stimulated, a small section of the membrane allows positively charged ions to rush into the axon, and the inside of the axon in this area becomes positively charged. This reversal of charge stimulates a similar change in the next section of the membrane. More positively charged ions flow into the axon and another section of the axon becomes positively charged. As this occurs, the previous section of the membrane expels positive ions and reverts to its resting negative state. This process is repeated along the axon, causing the impulse to move along it. The periodic table is a list of every chemical element, each of which is represented by a symbol. AG, for example, is the chemical symbol for silver. The elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, helium an atomic number of two, lithium three, beryllium four, boron five, 
and so on. Each row is known as a period, and each column is known as a group. Elements in the same group have similar chemical characteristics. The elements of group one, for example, are all highly reactive metals. Those of group 18 are unreactive gases. Two sequences of elements are often shown separated out of the base of the table. The elements from lanthanum to lutetium are called lanthanides, and those from actinium to laurentium are called actinides. We name the edges of this quadrilateral sheet A, B, C, and D, and mark opposite edges with parallel arrows. We can roll up the sheet to bring edges B and D towards each other with their arrows pointing the same way. Joining the edges B and D produces a hollow cylinder with circular ends A and C. We now bend the cylinder around so that edges A and C approach each other with their arrows pointing the same way. By joining the circular edges A and C, we produce a smooth, continuous donut-shaped surface called a torus. Both this torus and the original quadrilateral sheet are examples of the same type of surface called a two-torus. The violin makes a bright sound. It produces a wave pattern that looks like this. Sound waves of identical frequency and wavelength sound different when played on different instruments because of the harmonics each instrument produces. The same note played on a flute produces a wave pattern that looks like this. Transformations such as reflection, translation, and rotation change the position of a geometric figure. Enlargement and stretching increase the size of the figure. Shearing changes the shape of the figure, but its area remains the same. Reflection mirrors the figure in a straight line. Translation moves the figure to another point without rotating it or changing it in any other way. Rotation turns the figure around a point or axis. Enlargement increases the size of the figure but keeps its shape. Stretching increases the size of the figure but in only one direction. Shearing changes the shape of the figure, but the area remains the same. In a transverse wave, the disturbance of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of travel. Watch the red segment of this transverse wave. Its motion during the passage of the wave is at 90 degrees to the motion of the wave. In a longitudinal wave, the disturbance of the medium is parallel to the direction of travel. Watch the red segment of this longitudinal wave. Its motion during the passage of the wave is parallel to the motion of the wave. A soliton is an isolated wave that travels without dispersing its energy. Chlorine is a highly reactive yellow-green gas. If a piece of heated iron wool is added to the gas, a reaction starts to take place immediately and clouds of reddish-brown smoke are produced. When the lid of the vessel is replaced, the iron wool continues to react with the chlorine gas, producing even more smoke. After a few minutes, the reaction is complete, and a reddish-brown substance appears at the bottom of the vessel. This substance is a new compound made up of the elements iron and chlorine. It is called an iron chloride. In one form of the element, sulfur, each molecule consists of eight sulfur atoms. If we look at this molecule from above, we can see that the atoms are linked to form a ring. If we turn the molecule onto its side, we can see that the ring is not flat. The sulfur atoms alternate up and down because of the angle of the bonds linking them together. Using the example of a wheel, we can show that the circumference C of a circle is equal to pi times its diameter, 
D. We know that the diameter of the wheel is 60 centimeters and that pi approximately equals 3.14, so we simply multiply pi by the diameter. This tells us that the circumference is equal to 188.4 centimeters. We can trace some common geometric figures in the design of this truck. Here, we can see circles, a triangle, a square, and a rectangle. In a solid, the forces that hold particles together are very strong, allowing only slight movement or vibration. The tightly packed particles create objects of fixed form, such as rocks or pieces of wood. The forces between liquid particles can be just as strong as those in a solid, but they allow greater freedom of movement. This means that liquids can take on any shape, such as that of the inside of a bottle. The forces acting between gas particles are almost non-existent, so that the particles move around freely and at high speed. Gases can spread out to fill all kinds of spaces, from the inside of a child's balloon to the inside of an airship. If you were traveling on one of these rockets, looking across at the other rocket, you could measure your speed only in relation to the other craft or in relation to a particular star. If you had no means of measuring your speed relative to the stars and the other rocket moved ahead, it might be because it was accelerating or it might be because your rocket was slowing down. We know that the sum of the angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. It is fairly easy to figure out the size of the missing angle, C, in a triangle, provided we know the size of the other two angles. If we add together angle A, which is 35 degrees, and angle B, which is 90 degrees, we get a total of 125 degrees. All we have to do to find angle C is to take 125 degrees away from 180 degrees. This tells us that angle C must be 55 degrees.